Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this WBF session on carbon measurement and reporting a conversation with BECD. I am Fabrizio Variale, Place and Space Analyst at RICS and member of the steering group of BCD. And I'm very happy to be joined here by our three excellent panelists who are also members of the steering group. They are uh, Dominic Burbridge, uh, Director of Business Services at the Carbon Trust, Will Arnold, Head of Climate Action at ISTRAC-T, the Institution of Structural Engineers, and James Fisk, uh, CEO at BCIS, the Building Cost Information Service. Welcome, Dominic, Will, and James, and thank you for taking the time to be here. Uh, I will ask you to very briefly introduce yourself to the audience, to tell us what's your background and what it is that you do. Uh, maybe I'll go first to you, Dominic. Brilliant, thanks. Hi, everybody. So my name is Don Burbridge. I'm a director at the Carbon Trust. Um, I also sit on the, the senior management team for business services, which is our corporate advisory and assurance business. Um, we operate globally. We help businesses, um, governments and financial installations, sorry, financial institutions on their journey to net zero. Um, and personally, I've been working on um, carbon reduction, energy efficiency and renewable energy projects for more than 20 years across a range of sectors, mainly uh, construction, infrastructure, uh, residential property and commercial real estate, but also um, hospitality, uh, retail and, and consumer goods. Um, essentially, my job has been to sort of help businesses um, put in place their net zero strategies, um, climate risk and resilience strategies. And ultimately, it's about turning good environmental performance into competitive advantage. Um, I'm here today because actually I, I was looking back at this. James and I actually got together almost three three years to, to the day back in January 2020, where we sat down and said, wouldn't it be great if the Carbon Trust and RACS could work together to come up with a um, open source carbon emission factor database that could build on everything that's been going on in the industry for you know tens of years almost, and actually finally bring something to, to the market or to the industry that could really help improve the consistency um, of how we um, do whole life cost and carbon um, measurements to really drive down um, that delivery of a uh, net zero built environment. So thank you for inviting me to join you today and I'm looking forward to a great discussion. Thanks, Dom. Um, Will, I'll go to you now. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, Will Arnold, Head of Climate Action at the Institution of Structural Engineers. Um, I was a practicing structural engineer with AWAP for about 10 years before moving into this role and my job now is um, basically to try and put sustainability at the heart of what structural engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and that's been everything from helping generate guidance to help engineers understand carbon emissions, understand sustainability impacts on a broader sense, um, understand how they can reuse existing buildings and structures better, um, starting to sort of get deeper on the circular economy this year and also working to up the standards then that we hold our members to so from this year our members for example to come chartered um, so our new chartered members will have to be carbon literate they'll have to be able to calculate carbon as they go and learn how to reduce it so quite a sort of broad range of stuff but all to do with the, the, the 30,000 ish members that we have worldwide and trying to trying to get them aligned with the, the climate focus thanks for it thanks will and now james Thanks, Fabrizio. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, James Fisk. I'm the CEO of BCIS, which is the Building Cost Information Service. Um, that's one of the, the largest sort of providers of construction data in the, in, in, in the UK, predominantly focusing on, on construction costs, but also inflation and forecasting and other, and other sort of metrics. Um, I'm also the chair of the steering group of the Built Environment Carbon Database. And as Dom has just reminded me three years ago, incredibly scary. Three years ago, we came, uh, we came together as a group of individuals that Fabrizio will tell us about shortly uh, to try and solve this, this challenge which is going on with regard to sort of carbon reporting and carbon reduction. Um, the challenge obviously being that, uh, 
it, there's lots of inconsistencies in terms of the measurement and reporting of carbon. Uh, and one of the barriers to, to, to that sort of consistent reporting is, is around data. Um, so as a group of individuals, we've, we've, we've come together, um, you know, three years ago, we started this journey um, and, and we're getting now close to, to being able to help the industry to do this. So I'm delighted to be here today. My background is a quantity surveyor. Um, uh, so so I'll, I'll, I'll probably have a slightly different sort of uh, a, a, a opinion on, on measurement uh, than, than some of the other panelists. So I'm really excited excited to be here. Thanks for being here. Thanks, James. Um, now, before we start talking about BCD, I'd just like to remind the audience that we have a live poll that you can answer. You should be able to see that on the right hand of your interface. Um, and the poll is asking, what is the biggest obstacle to a large uptake or whole life carbon assessment in construction and real estate? Now, please take a moment to um, answer the poll during the session, and we will comment the results at the end. Now, just to set the scene of our discussion, I'm gonna give a very quick overview of BCD, just a five minutes to, to show his background, the concept and the stage of development. Then I will turn to our panelists with the questions that we have prepared for them. And we'll see if there's any question from, from the audience. So just bear with me while I sh share my screen. And here we are at BCD, the Build Environment Carbon Database. You can see here on the right hand side, the partners um, that are in the steering group. As you can see, we are put together really a consortium, the major UK professional bodies and organization that work in the area of the build environment. So what is BCD, how did it start? Um, as, as Dom and, and James were saying, essentially in 2020, it, the, the idea started circulating around that towards the end, or yes, yes, um, put together a, a, a workshop with industry representatives to understand what were the industry needs in terms of data, uh, project LCA, product LCA. Later, um, we convened the major uh, UK professional bodies and organization to collaborate on this industry-led database. Uh, now, the objectives really of, of BCD is to establish the official UK repository for whole life carbon data on the build environment. And that means that it will help harmonizing and streamlining the reporting practices. It will increase the availability of free data, but also increase transparency and data quality, not just for the free data. Uh, and we are in alignment and collaboration with the professional statement that RSCS is updating, as well as the net zero carbon building standard. Um, oops. Um, so just to say briefly about what, what BCD is, um, it's a data repository, not an assessment tool. So we're not um, uh, taking the role of what assessment tools are doing. We are just a place where you can share the data and, and use it to, to, to better the industry and to better our understanding. Uh, now that means that as a place where the data can be reported and brought together, it will be capable to import and export data from existing software applications. It will work to a basic account, which would be free to use to report and retrieve carbon data. And then we just now started to develop the idea for a pro account, which will have advanced filtering and benchmarking. But it's important to understand that the raw data will always be free, free to access. Now, BCD is really two database separate um, entities, really. The, the first one looks at assets, i.e. projects, and these can be buildings or infrastructure, and we're looking to capture both embodied and operational carbon. The second part of the database looks at products. So LCA of uh, product for construction or works or materials, general LCA or more specifically environmental product declarations. When it comes to the asset section, very quickly, again, we're capturing both embodied and operational carbon will be able to track uh, how the assessment has varied to a project stage. Users will be able to input the data manually or with a semi-automated um, uh, mode. They'll be able to share project among different users so that they can input different parts. Uh, there will be a component of project analysis and comparison, and obviously there'll be uh, the capacity to export the data. When it comes then to the product sections, this is effectively a catalog of existing LCA for construction products. We're looking not to capture everything, but just the basic information about ELC LCA record that's out there. Users will uh, go through a search uh, function uh, to, to look at the records and, and filter them out. 
that will all be also be able to input some new data that an administrator will will go through and check and, and approve and that might be a manufacturer or, or an, an academic that has done an LCA and wants to share that data. And the idea here is really not to replicate anything that's out there, but to bring it together. There's a, a lot of different places where this uh, LCA records are sitting, such as EPDs, digitalized or half digitalized on EcoPortal, other EPDs, the inventory of carbon energy, academic LCA, professional LCA, but also databases that are paid will be able to bring them together at a list point to, to, those, to those sources. And just finally, uh, just a few idea of what the status is. We essentially started working um, in early 2021. We then uh, put together two working groups, one for the asset section, one for the product section. We had uh, two consultation on the asset section, one just finished, and we are planning to launch uh, both databases, at least in a partial form, um, in April 2023. So I hope that gave an idea of where we are. I will now stop sharing and get back to our discussion. So um, I have a few questions for, for, for our panelists. I'll, I'll ask um, first, maybe Will um, to, to comment on something and then the others two can, can come in and uh, as follows, I'll always ask somebody to ask first and then the other two can, can come in. Um, Will, so I... I, I I very briefly, and, and, and you and, and James and Don also very briefly mentioned why we need a database like PCD in the UK. But if you can tell us more why there is this need and what role will it play in the decarbonization efforts. Um, in the UK, since it's, it's a UK based um, application or, or initiative, but also if you want to say maybe something on an international level. Uh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, why do, why do we need this? Why do, why do we need a centralised database for carbon data? Um, I think that we have standards and probably regulation coming on the topic of whole life carbon in the UK. I suspect we'll have whole life carbon regulation, uh, a, a timeline for it within the next sort of year or two being firmed up, for, uh, a best guess. But even before that comes in, we have things like the net zero carbon building standard, which, which was optional is a standard around whole life carbon assessment. All of those sorts of things, um, the second you start setting limits on carbon, you need a pretty good set of data to be able to back those limits up. Um, otherwise people sort of, sort of lose confidence in them. And whilst that data is being kept within firms, we're prevented from progressing. Um, we're prevented from understanding what the, the impacts of our sector looks like, what the impacts of different building types looks like, what decisions people are making and how that's reflecting. There's firms out there proclaiming that they've collected the carbon data on a thousand projects now. I mean, great, but it doesn't help anyone except them and maybe their clients who they serve. Um, we're not going to decarbonize the built environment with that mentality. So we need, we need a centralized point to bring all this data together for. Um, and to me, the, you know, the BECD is the only data source or the only sort of initiative like this out there in the UK that's being backed by the built environment, by all the professional institutions that will point all this data into one direction. Um, it's referenced in the net zero carbon building standard. It's been referenced in part Z, which is calling for embodied carbon regulation in the UK. It's been referenced in the future homes hubs um, plan for reducing embodied and whole life carbon over the next few years. All of these things are pointed towards the platform. They're all saying we need a platform with open source, anonymized data, so we can see how we're getting on. And to me, that's that, that's in essence what, what we need. We need that open source platform full of data. Thanks, Will. Um, James or Dom, uh, do you want to add, to add anything? Yeah, happy to happy to jump in before Dom does. Sorry, Dom, I saw you were about to talk. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I think I think Will has has, has has said it said it beautifully. This is this is all about an industry drive to try and reduce emissions. If we think uh, the built environment is responsible for for you know circa forty percent of of greenhouse gas gas emissions, um, you know we need to be driving those down as 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 an industry. Uh, and we all have a, a an ethical sort of duty of care to try and to try and do that. Um, the 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 challenge that we have is that if you ask five different um, sort of assessors to do an assessment, a whole life carbon assessment on a building at the moment, chances are that you'll get five different answers back. Um, and that's that's not because one's better than the other. It's 
It's the fact that the methodology is kind of up for a bit of interpretation at the moment, uh, and the data is certainly either not available or it's not consistent. So, so ultimately, you end up with, with different numbers coming out. Um, and that can be a problem, or it can be a really bad problem, depending on how you're, how you're using the data. I mean, if you're if you're being uh, inconsistently wrong, but you're making decisions based on, on 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 those things, and you're driving the carbon down, then that's maybe not so bad. But but uh, if you're trying to compare <clears throat> one building against another and learn in the way that sort of you know Will was was talking about there, we need to learn and share from each other. Then then that can be a huge a huge problem. Um, so so we've we've come together as a as a as a group of of parties organisations um, with a common common goal of, of making that data data consistent so um, uh, and as as will has already said it's 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 an industry thing this isn't a this isn't a commercial drive by an organization trying to make money this is literally trying to encourage people to share learn from each other and drive down emissions which is something we should all get behind yeah I completely agree <clears throat> thanks i mean from my perspective i'm a great i'm very much fact driven and um, the old adage of what gets measured gets managed is essential here. And if we're going to transform the built environment, then there's a lot of tough decisions that need to be made. And then we're going to need to channel a lot of um, capital into those decisions. And if we're going to do that, we need to make sure that we're making the right decisions. And so for me, um, this database becomes this sort of single source of truth. Um, and this is why it's really important, A, that it's open source and B, um, that it's really got the backing of the whole industry because um, people have been working on this area for a long time and we now want to bring everyone together. Let's get all that information into one place and then let's let's use it. Remember that um, measurement is just the start. We need reduction. So measurement gives us our starting point. We know what pathways we need to achieve reduction, which is alignment, you know, keeping below the 1.5 degree limits, which in, in very simplistic terms is delivering absolute reductions of you know, more than 4.2% um, carbon intensity each, each year for whatever you're building. Um, so we, we just need to get that baseline in place. We know where we need to get to net zero, 90% reduction in the whole value chain of, of the built environment by 20, before 2050. Um, and this is gonna be a great tool in doing it. So I think, for me, that's the that's you know that's the the first thing. What gets measured gets managed. The second thing is, um, and this is where the asset bit comes in to benchmarks. We need to know what good looks like. So let's benchmark where we are now, um, and then that would unlock all sorts of things because it will start helping people compare um, one asset against another, helping them realize um, what the nature of the challenges are, where are the hot spots, where are the opportunities for for reduction. Um, and then fundamentally, you know, we just come back to this point is that um, there's been an amazing focus on energy efficiency within the built environment and through things like building regulations or building codes or legislation, you know, we really have seen significant reductions. Um, energy intensity is coming down. We know it's not just about carbon, but it's about the, the energy intensity as well. But what I'm seeing is that the um, if you take that whole life costing approach, more than 50% now for modern buildings or modern, in the built environment, more than 50% is actually embodied carbon. So we need to shine a light on, on that area. Um, the embodied carbon is the upfront carbon. Once it's spent, it's locked in. So we need to take make decisions today that's really going to make you know, significant reductions in that. And I f fundamentally believe this database is going to unlock that. So it's um, essential and exciting. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, I will stay with you, actually, if you can maybe tell us something uh, about how do you see uh, different users using BCD? Yeah, I mean, I think in some ways we've sort of touched on this. I think, um, you know, it's got, it's, this database has got the potential to create an awful lot of value across that whole value chain, both in buildings and infrastructure. Um, I think everyone's got a lot to gain from this. And if we think about um, who's in the value chain, Everything from asset owners, you know, through to asset managers in the, in the financial world, through to developers, um, designers, contractors, suppliers, policymakers, um, everybody. This is this that they, they've all got something that they can get out of this. So 
if I go back to say um, asset owners, the first thing people want to do with benchmarks is like, how does my estate compare to my peers? Um, and then they can start to think about what's possible today. How do I reduce that? Um, and then what do I need in the future to keep me on that, that pathway of reduction? Um, asset managers are asking themselves all the time, have I got a green portfolio? There's a lot of green capital, a lot of um, socially responsible investment that wants to flow into this area. So they're really asking themselves, what do I need to do to meet that bar? You know, whether it's the EU taxonomy um, or, you know, future bars. Um, I think developers are, are very much thinking about how do I future proof my assets? Um, you want to be building something now that is fit, that is future proof for the net zero world. Um, tenants have increasing expectations about um, what they expect from the building. Um, and that includes uh, maintainability um, and sort of, you know, the whole life um, carbon and body carbon, as well as the operational carbon. I think for designers, it's going to be fundamental because um, ultimately we're going to have this source of emission factors. James made the key point around consistency, which is like, how do we get um, everybody to have the same perspective? Um, and so rather than leaving things up to interpretation, let's just have that single point of truth. Um, for contractors, I think it's going to help them think about what innovations can they bring to the table? If they've got a design and build contract, they know what the client now wants. They can start building those carbon cost models and actually thinking about options to um, strip out cost and carbon um, at the detailed design stage. Um, and then obviously suppliers, there's, this is now giving them the signal that there is a demand for low carbon products and building materials. And so they'll be able to put all of their information, all those EPDs that they've got on the shelf, this is now the shop window to actually get this out there in the market for people to see the solutions that are there and start making um, more informed purchasing decisions. And ultimately, and probably coming back to Will's point about policymakers and legislation, um, this is very much going to help with the whole benchmarking, the target setting, um, understanding what's cost effective now um, and over what time scale can we constantly improve it. So I think the whole value chain's got a lot together, um, uh, sort of gain from this. Um, and again, hopefully it's going to be transformational. Yeah, great. Um, I don't know if Will or James, if you want to come in. Yeah, I've got, a, I mean, a couple of other thoughts to sort of add on that. One is that um, we didn't really um, answer your first question from Bitsio, but you mentioned internationally, um, you know, beyond the UK's borders. And I think that in a way, you know, a user of the BCD that will interact with this will be people based in other countries wanting to see how the UK is tackling this topic. Um, you know, we're, I wouldn't say the UK is at the front of whole life carbon assessments in the world, but we're, you know, we're up there in maybe the sort of top, 15 or 20 countries in terms of um, pushing on this agenda and people in other countries will be introducing standards and regulation of their own in due course and they will want to see how this has been done in the UK not just in terms of how something like the BCD works but also what data comes out to the other end of that what does that tell you about office buildings and so on um, so I think I think there's that there's a, the, the other the other group of people who I think will make good use out of this will be the design industry in general, um, whether you're an architect or an engineer, there, there'll be something really handy about being able to track uh, the carbon on your project in a consistent format on every project to see how you're getting on. And whether that's so that within your firm, you can just make the view that from now on, we're just going to upload you know, our carbon assessments to BCD on every project that we work on, and we will do our disciplines worth, and we'll push the disciplines to do theirs. However you do it, it will mean that you'll be able to log in and look at your records you'll be able to look at one project across different stages and you'll be able to see how things have changed over that time. And that's really powerful because that helps give you that quicker feedback loop on whether the sorts of design decisions you're making or maybe it's the way you're bidding for work and the projects you're deciding not to take on, how all of that is coming together to hopefully help you sort of prove that you're driving down emissions on your work. So to me, that's it, you know, to, to be able to use it to create that feedback loop, I think is really powerful and something that's missing from a lot of firms at the moment. Thanks, Will. James, don't know if you have anything else to add to this. I don't think there's too much to add for yeah. Bitsio other than, um, I, I, as you know, I've, I've got quite a simple simple brain. So, so when I explain uh, BECD to, to, to people, it's, its main use cases are for estimating when you don't have any data 
or or, or for benchmarking. Um, so regardless of of what sort of discipline or or job that you're fulfilling in the built environment, um, you know, using uh, BECD to to either estimate or or benchmarking to make sure that you're making the right choices um, in whatever discipline that you fulfill is is really the function of BECD. Yeah. Um, I have a special question for you, James. Uh, a special <laughs> yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you can tell us a bit more about the, the challenges that we face during, and we're still facing during the, the development of, of BCD. Wow, that's, um, <laughs> I, I fear your webinar probably isn't long enough uh, for me to <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Challenges. So, uh, well, the first, the first challenge is, 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 was really around without sort of uh, a UK sort of government mandate uh, in, in, in place, um, we've we've come together to 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 try and solve this problem. Um, that that brings challenges in terms of sort of funding. Um, so how do you how do you fund um, something like uh, this 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 database? Um, so uh, BCIS are funding the technology development, but a lot of people sitting across the working groups and people who have taken time in in terms of feeding back on consultations, um, people in the steering group, uh, PR comms and all of the other bits associated with it have all been um, free activities that people have given up uh, time to do, which um, quite is, is staggering, uh, to be honest. The amount of work involved in, in developing something like this is, is huge and lots and lots of people have put in time to, 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 to make it happen, which I, which I think is, is great. Um, what I thought the first challenge would be on BCD is actually getting uh, the professional bodies uh, to, to, to get around a table to, to, to agree something. I, I expected that would be a, a big challenge, but a absolutely it's not been. Um, pleased to say that mm. uh, everybody's got, got behind this, they understand it and, and, and they're fully supportive of it. So, so that's, that's been great. Um, other other challenges relate to this is this is a fast moving sort of field. Um, there's lots of things going on all of the time, trying to keep up with all of those things and making sure that we're developing a database that supports it, um, uh, and and trying to pre prevent what often happens in our industry is the reinvention of the wheel. Um, uh, so so you have to keep communicating with large bodies of people to make sure that we're kind of aligned uh, and and making sure we're developing what what needs to be to developed to support the industry in the way that we were talking about earlier. There's a whole raft of sort of technical challenges as well that I won't go into today because there really isn't enough time, but uh, how much data do you collect uh, for projects? Um, there's obviously benefits to capturing lots of data, but but clearly that's, that's a bit onerous for people to enter data into. Uh, sort of data structures, what structure do you do? How do you ensure quality? As with any database, you've got to make sure that you avoid the garbage in, garbage out scenario, which happens on, on databases. So how do you ensure that, that quality? What kind of reporting? There's all sorts of, uh, sorts of, uh, sort of uh, challenges that we're, we're having, to, having to overcome. But the good news is that we're all doing this as an industry. This, this isn't a single initiative. This is a, a, a pan-industry initiative, as I refer to it. So it's the industry trying to overcome these, 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 these problems. Yeah, as I say, Fabrizio, there's a lot of challenges, <laughs> but we haven't got enough time to cover them all. As we know, as we know. Um, I don't know if Will or, or, or Dom, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, I would, I would chip in. And I think, you know, James made the point really well, which is that um, we are, we're not reinventing the wheel. What we're trying to do is to weave together all of that excellent work that's been done before. And that is going to be the key to the success because um, it, it is about cohesion. This is about convergence, not divergence. So I think that's, that is a challenge, but I think it is working. And I think that's really exciting. Um, ultimately for it to be a success, which is obviously a challenge um, is for that to be a success, it's got to be useful and um, really, and I come back to that point about we want it to be the single source of truth that everyone can get behind. Um, and I think that's, you know, that is that that is the challenge. So a lot of what we're doing is try to be all about listening to the industry. And then we're then a vessel to basically deliver what is needed. Um, and, you know, and whilst that is time consuming and it is, is taking time, I think it's going to bear fruit and it will be to make sure that this is a, a long lasting and really just the start of, of um, you know, something that's a real solution for the industry. 
No, I, I, I second what Dom said. I'd, I'd also say that, so coming out of this from the point of view of somebody who sits on the steering group for the net zero carbon building standard, um, I can tell you that we've we've been working with and using the BCD in anger for the last couple of months, actually, which has been quite good. Maybe anger is not quite the right word. That's not <laughs> fair. Um, but so so we're, we're writing this standard that will be something that, you know, developers and clients can specify as part of the brief for their new building that's being built or the retrofit of an existing building, it would sit alongside saying that this has to achieve Briam excellent. For example, it would also say has to achieve net zero in accordance with the net zero carbon building standard. Um, and to do that, we've had to set performance levels. So we need benchmark data for existing buildings so that we can set future limits. Um, and to bring that data in, we've been asking people to submit it via the beta version of the BECD. And I think for us, what that's... Um, what that sort of brought out is there's been this real difficulty in getting the balance right between the sort of ease of entry and getting enough data to make the output really useful. And they're completely, you know, they're in such tension, those two things, because at the one end of the scale, you can say, well, just give us total embodied carbon per square meter, higher the building of the name, and that'd be it. And at the other end, you could ask for, you know, the door handle specification as you go through, and you've got to hit the sweet spot somewhere in between. Um, but I think what's been, what's been good about this process that we've been through is, and I think we got nearly 200-ish projects came through the BECD that we've been able to use for the standards. So, yeah, that's, that's a lot of people's time and a lot of sort of real focus effort from these people putting this stuff in um, and working, like I say, in, in Angus, sort of make sure that this works properly. And the feedback we then got out of that, feedback into the BECD, has been really vital. And I think that, um, you know, we... I, I personally would expect that the final version that we're then going to see come out later in the year will be slicker, than the beta that those of you, you know, if you're listening and you've used this and you were thinking, ah, oh, you know, it was a bit difficult at times, don't worry, that's all going to get refreshed. But we're going to try and do it without losing the usefulness of the content that goes into there. Because I think we've realised that, you know, you just need to switch the balance, balance point base slightly. So, yeah, that's, that's, I'd say, you know, to me, that's been the biggest challenge. But one that, you know, hopefully now that we've gone through that, we should be able to resolve and it should make it all the stronger as a result. Thanks, Will. Uh, maybe I'll just stay with you with a quick question just before we go maybe to questions for from the public. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could tell us something about what's, uh, what's a current thinking in terms of how we're going to incentivize people to, to share the data through BCD, which is going to be crucial. So um, I think it has to be considered as part of the sort of life cycle assessment ecosystem that's sort of growing around the built environment. So the BECD, it sits alongside the VIC's professional statement on whole life carbon assessments. The two of them are completely intertwined, both in terms of reporting and methodology. Um, it will sit alongside the net zero carbon building standard, as I mentioned. And of course, it's referenced in the proposed part Z, amendment to building regs, um, which was also used to inform the carbon emissions buildings bill that was debated a couple of months ago in Parliament. So these things all sit together and all need to be backed at the same time. And so as a professional institution, um, the ISTRUCT have said that we, you know, we back the development of all of those and we'll do what we can to make sure that that whole ecosystem is sort of pushed on our members or our UK members, at least in a way that it gets good uptake. Um, so that's, you know, we, we've been, you know, working with the BCD now for that sort of two and a half, three year timeline that you put out at the start since I remember that first workshop in 2020. I think it was one of the first conferences I've been to in this sort of online world where I came away from it going, well, that actually really works at the conference. Maybe there is hope. Um, I remember that quite distinctly. Um, so, you know, we've been at this for, for a while now. And once launched, you know, the, the iStruct team will be looking to work out how best to train our members up to use it, how we provide guidance to our members and how we work with other institutions to do the same. Because um, as, you know, Dom's touched on a couple of times, that, that this needs to be one point, which means that you need all members of different sort of professional bodies to be able to work towards the same things because that's really really important and then the, the last thing i'd say in terms of you know incentivizing people to to use it we um we, we hold our own annual awards as most institutions do and last year for the first time we um we mandated how the embodied carbon of our members project should be reported back to us um so that we could use that as part of the the judging um, when discussing the shortlisting and you know we've been we've been asking for carbon i think for at least a year or two before that and we've obviously been assessing sustainability previously but last year was the first time where we said this is how you report it and that added huge power to be able to sort of understand the impact of these projects and how heavily they touch the earth 
as it were. And it actually resulted in us removing a couple from the shortlist where we just felt that project was, you know, it's just off the scale in terms of emissions compared to other things. We can't justify sitting down alongside our shortlisted projects. And so the hope is that in the future we can use the BDCD to encourage that and maybe other professional institutions would use the same platform. And then all of a sudden you get this real consistency amongst disciplines of how we report, how we measure, and ultimately what we consider to be, you know, a great piece of engineering versus something that's maybe something of the past. Thanks. Um, James or Dom, I don't know if you want to add anything on this, otherwise we have questions from, from the audience. I'll just make just one sentence, which is, it's all about creating a critical mass um, so that this becomes the, the single place that people go to. And for that, we need champions um, and early adopters to get that ball rolling. And as Will said, we've had a great response to the consultations to date. Um, and so we can just, you know, just encourage others to really get involved with this. Um, and ultimately, when people just start hearing about the value it creates, um, this is going to help it snowball. So we're on that journey. Um, but yeah. It's been beautifully said already, Fabrizio, so not much more I can add other than the fact that um, we, we need to make it as easy as possible to, to, to make sure that people can, can share data. So we've talked about, you know, as, as, as Will was uh, talking about earlier, the, the consultation sort of has identified things that will be improving from an interface perspective. The other thing, just to make it clear to everyone, that we are looking to provide links between commercial available software and the BECD. So the idea being that in the future, you'll be able to work on whatever platform you're working and you'll be able to click a button that says, share this with BECD, or hopefully um, compare against BECD projects uh, within those pieces of software. So, so the interface and the link between BECD and those commercially available pieces of software is, is, is critical, I think, to the, to the uptake of it as well. Thanks, James. Um, so I do have a couple of questions in the list here. Maybe one is uh, for you, James, since it's about data specifically and, and cost, but maybe Will and Don will also have something to say. So uh, the quest is, is it's a bit long. In view of, of purportedly notorious developer lack of disclosure in respect of development fundamentals, for example, cost, is data underpinning indices considered sufficiently comprehensive and accurate to inform the sound decision making a change. And I guess that's can we can we trust the data that we're gonna get in, in a sense. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a great a great point. And there's a whole bit about sort of you know what the industry needs to do in terms of uh, regulation of this. So I'm I'm aware, uh, Fabrizio, as you are, of of well over 40, 40 carbon calculators being available, sort of serving the UK at the moment that unfortunately all work in slightly different ways and report uh, slightly slightly different numbers so, so so there is a piece that the industry needs to do to make sure that that um, there is some form of of, of of regulation I won't get into that uh, debate uh, debate here today but um, um, so so in terms of the, the the data that is being being provided uh, the role of the BECD is really to, to capture what data it is and capture enough context about that data so that somebody can use it. Uh, use it. So, so what methodology has been used, what's been included within the assessment, what's been excluded. That type of information, i.e. the context of the data is really, really important. Uh, and that's all we can do from a BECD perspective, make sure we're capturing enough of, of, of that. Um, Will, Dom, I don't know if you've got any further thoughts on, on that. I just 100% agree. Um... It's the start. As, as this evolves over time, it will continuously improve. In the first instant, it's about just being clear what is the level of quality um, and then letting it evolve from there. Thanks, Tom. Will, uh, I see you're, you're just not... Nothing to add. <laughs> no, nothing to add. Good. Uh, second question from 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 the audience and i think that this is more of a general about awareness of, of these kind of topics saying that uh well surveyors engineers and architects are aware of the need to reduce our carbon footprint uh do effectively we as part of the kind of the people who are aware of this do we feel that the the ordinary joe in the street has taken on board the need to to capture first but then also to to, to cut their carbon emissions um in this respect, is this something that, you know, as we, that somebody who's aware of this, how do we see this? 
think um, from my experience, yeah, we're certainly not at the point yet where every single designer out there is, you know, sticking the, the carbon figures in the corner of every drawing and sketch they submit. But we're not there. We've got a lot of work to get to that point. <clears throat> but I do think that the industry as a whole are, A, generally aware that this is their problem that they need to own and need to do something about, um, and B, have been given the tools and guidance necessary to help them do that. Um, I, as you know, speaking on behalf of the Art team, we're now entering into a phase of taking the guidance and the tools and the training and everything that we've generated over the last two or three years and just working on making sure that as many members as possible know that it's there. So not just the early adopters, not just those with a keen interest in sustainability, but all of them. And that's part of the reason for sort of raising our standards to, you know, to, to mandate that engagement, as it were. Um, and I suspect that other institutions are in a similar position. Um, it's only going to go in one direction, though, isn't it? And and it's you know whether to get to that eighty percent uptake of the industry takes two years or five years. That's the question that we're trying to answer: is when rather than if. And and ultimately, tools like the BCD that simplify that process or at least bring consistency to that process. That's a really key part in doing this because the easier you make it for people, and the more likely it is that they only have to do the same thing on every project rather than something different every single time. Then the more likely it is that they'll they'll sort of jump on board this bandwagon as it were. Thanks, Will. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Bob, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to just gonna chip in, which is basically, um, yeah, completely agree. This is the role of the professional bodies. We're going to make this business as usual, such that it, that it, it is a consideration. Certainly, I've got an engineering background. Most engineers are problem solvers. They just need to know, be pointed in the direction of the problem um, and given the tools to do it. So I think, you know, this is what we're doing. I think just thinking about generally um, whether you're, you know, the man on the street or the person on the street, um, I think there is a much greater awareness of the need to do this and deliver net zero buildings. But I think what we're really noticing is a lot of scepticism about A, is it achievable? B, are people making the right sort of claims? And so we hear a lot about greenwashing. Um, having this tool in place is the perfect antidote to that because as I say, it can be fact-based decisions that drive, um, you know, real uh, measurable outcomes. Um, and so in that way, it actually unlocks an opportunity. You know, another buzzword that's flying around is around green hushing, which is where organizations are concerned about making environmental claims about how they are part of the solution to um, climate change rather than the problem, but they're worried about putting their head above the parapet um, if they can't substantiate their claims. And so, this is another way in which we're going to enable organizations that are making a difference to actually be out there and promote um, you know, the, all the good stuff that they're doing. Thanks, Bob. Just, just, just adding a, a small piece at the end, Fabrizio, if we've got, if we've sure. got time. A absolutely. This is about sort of case studies um, and, and learning and, and showing the industry that, that actually this, this, it, this is achievable, this is, this is doable. It's often not that well understood that, that um, saving carbon on construction projects can often save money as well. So, so regardless of purely the, 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 the ethical sort of nature of, of carbon reporting, if you're doing this correctly, you will save yourselves money. You will start to think about the ongoing maintainability of what you're producing now. So, so I think the best way of sort of getting the industry behind that concept is to share, to share more case studies, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, and once we once we're in that place, I, I, I think people will 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 get behind it even more. But judging by the amount of questions that I get these days, it's it's increasing at an exponential rate. So so clearly there is a drive for for reporting and, and more and more clients are asking for it. So I think we're heading in the right direction already. Thanks, James. Uh, we're just very getting very close to the end of the session. There was a, a quick question, uh, third question, which I might just be able to quickly answer on, on the spot. Um, one member or the other was asking, at what point does privacy work into the metrics reported on properties develop and retrofit that and the quick answer that I would put in is um, so we we as BCD collect very little data points that are actually uh, sensitive sensitive data um, but but those will be anonymized so obviously we'll we'll take care of the respecting all the regulations that that concern privacy and, and data protection of course but um, if you want to know more please please contact us we just got in the results of the poll 
uh, which was asking what is the, la the, the biggest uh, obstacle uh, for a larger uptake of whole life carbon uh, assessment. And interestingly, 29% identified that as the lack of regulation in terms of lack of mandatory assessment. 0% said that the lack of good quality data, interesting, um, while 36% said it's the lack of standardized methodology and guidance. Um, clearly something that RSCS is, is addressing with the update of the professional statement. 21% uh, said it's the lack of client demand, uh, obviously a, a factor, but also 14% said it's a lack of skilled assessors, which I think it's an interesting uh, you know, distribution of, of, of answers. I don't know if uh, James, Will or Dom, you wanna comment on these. I mean, really surprising to see the data one, obviously, um, mm. uh, there, Fabrizio, is my initial reaction as you read out, read, read out the schools, um, yeah, um, bearing in mind that the, the data numbers that are being used in assessments are, are very, very different. I would, have, I would have thought that would have been, been slightly higher. Um, yeah, that was my, my initial reaction mm. only. And, and so I'll take a positive spin on that data, which is actually, and it emphasizes what we're trying to do, which is maybe people think they have all the right data, but now it's about sharing it. And I think um, I think that was a point made earlier, is that a lot of people are doing their own assessments in-house and they've got their own view, but now we need that single point of truth for, for everyone. The other thing I'd say is because there's such a wide distribution, this is a classic example of why there's no single solution and why this has been quite a hard thing to solve. Is because there's multiple layers of problems and hopefully yeah we're learning from that and, and bring, bringing that all together into one place yeah you beat me to it Dom. i was just going to say it proves that there's no silver bullet to this and and you know it, it's one of the reasons why when the bcd launches don't expect that as of you know one month later we're going to solve the climate crisis right but it's part of this really important ecosystem of things that we need to sort of cultivate and grow over the next few years if we're going to stand any chance of trying to get emissions under control Thanks, Will. Uh, we're now uh, at the end of our session, just slightly over the time limit, uh, but I think this was a really an interesting discussion and a great opportunity for, uh, for the audience to, um, to get to more information about BCD. Uh, and I want, just want to thank the audience for being here for their question and, and thank again the panelists for their contribution. Uh, before I close the session, I just want to mention the website again, bcd.co.uk, where you can read more about BCD, leave your email address to be notified whenever there's something new happening with BCD, which have you seen is be relatively soon. Just want to remind the audience that WBF Week is still happening today and tomorrow, so I encourage you to check out the rest of the program. Uh, again, thanks to everyone who joined. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.